Hello, Chem 130L. In this experiment, we're going to be looking at the fermentation of sugar. So during the fermentation process, a molecule called ADP is created. That ADP is adenosine triphosphate. And what ADP is, is it's an energy molecule. And so by this process of fermentation, we're going to create energy. And through this experiment, we're actually going to measure how much ADP our various different sugars are able to produce. So we're gonna look at some sucrose, some dextrose, some lactose, some starch, some cellulose. And we're going to measure the amount of ATP formation from each of those various sugars. Okay, so you're going to have some materials in this plastic bag that is labeled fermentation of sugars. You'll find all sorts of things. We've got some styrofoam cups, some plastic bottles, some centrifuge tubes, some plastic tubing, yeast, our different sugars, and some mineral oil, and a scoop. Okay, from your general equipment kit, you will need your grease pencil, your thermometer, droppers, your 10 mil graduate cylinder, your beaker, your balance, and some light bulbs. All right. And then, of course, you are going to want your normal PPE, so your lab coat, your gloves, and your goggles. All right. The other additional stuff that you'll need for this experiment, as usual, you'll need something to take pictures with, so your cell phone, and you will need hot tap water. Okay, so this experiment has you setting up a series of three runs um, and then doing all your stuff with those with your monosaccharides and then doing this again with your polysaccharides. So since I'm out here in the garage and I'm not next to a tap, I have one bottle of hot water here. So I'm just going to set up a single run. I'm not going to set up all three monosaccharides. I'm just going to set up the sucrose run so that we can have a demo here um, because that's how much hot tap water I was able to bring out with me. Now, a couple of really important things when you're looking at working with yeast, I don't know if any of you have ever baked before, but it is important that you are using warm water. So when it says to bring it to 35 degrees Celsius, make sure that you don't get your water at 35 degrees Celsius, get the rest of your stuff and then come back to your water you know, 20 minutes later because your water will have cooled down by then. It is really important that you are using good warm water because that helps the yeast activate and do what it needs to do, okay? All right, so the grease pencil, we're gonna label our bottles. We need to label glucose, sucrose, and lactose. Since I'm just doing the sucrose, I'm just gonna put an S on here for sucrose. So I remember that I am using sucrose. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna start working with chemicals. I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my gloves on and now I'm gonna go ahead and put my goggles on. Okay, and I want to make sure that I have a good ink pen to record data as I do my experiment. Okay, so now we need to take our balance. Okay, and I'm going to put a weigh boat on my balance. I'm going to hit the tear button. So it subtracts the mass of my weigh boat. So now all I'm going to be getting is the mass of my sucrose. So this envelope is labeled sucrose. I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut open my sucrose envelope. Okay, for this envelope, I'm going to go ahead and cut open the entire top of it because I'm sticking a scoop down in it. Oh, I did not get down far enough. It's sealed pretty high up, and I just noticed I did not cut down far enough. There we go. I'll cut down a little bit more. And normally I like to just cut open a corner of things, um, but because I need to use my scoop, and my scoop's a little bit big, I'm going to go ahead and cut open the whole packet. All right, so I'm going to scoop out some sucrose, and I need to weigh out about a gram of my sucrose. All right, okay, if you accidentally weigh out too much sucrose and pour some back into your packet, it's a little too much. All right, there we go. Almost a gram there. A little too much. So it's not important that you have exactly 1.00 grams, but you want to make sure that you're about a gram. 
is too much and it's going to mess up your ability to compare with everything else because you really do want to make sure that you're getting a consistency with how much you weigh out so that way when you compare the amount of um uh, ATP that's formed by all of your different sugars, you're getting a consistency there. And so if you accidentally weigh out, you know, two grams of one thing and one gram of, a, of another thing, or 1.3 grams of one and 0.9 grams of the other, you're going to be very off in those numbers. So you want to try and make sure that you're getting good consistency with how much you're weighing out. All right, I do need my sucrose later. So I'm going to carefully fold my envelope around so that it doesn't go spilling out. I'm going to put that off to the side to use later. All right, now I need to add my sucrose to my small bottle. The nice thing about these whey boats is I'm going to pinch it in half and then it becomes a little funnel. All right. All right, and now this one's been used for sucrose. I'm going to put it off to the side so that I don't use it again later until I have cleaned it. All right, now, all right, now I have my hot water right here. Okay, and I want to add some water, approximately 125 mils of water to my beaker. So I use a thermal insulated cup to bring it out here. All right, there's my approximately 125. Way to tear it. Now, I have a slight conundrum here. I've used my scoop, okay? It has sucrose all over it. I don't want to get sucrose in my yeast because that will mess everything up. So I'm gonna get out a cup. I'm gonna take my deionized water and I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my scoop, okay? I'm gonna set this aside. That's now my waste container, okay? Now, a lot of times in the lab, what we would do is we would go ahead and let this air dry. Because I need to use it again right away, I'm going to need to dry it off. And so I'm going to come over here where I have some lab cloths stacked up. Yeah, I use these uh, just for lab stuff like this when I do need to dry things off. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this off. I bought a, a package of 10 super cheap uh, washcloths from, I think it was Home Goods a while back that I just use for small projects out here when I'm doing lab work. And then um, when I get them all dirty, then I just throw them in the wash and then I can use them again. All right, now I have a clean scoop. I'm gonna turn my balance on. Okay, I've teared it. Now I need my yeast, okay? So same thing, we're going to go ahead and cut open our yeast. Okay. All right, and now this time we need two grams. So I'm gonna pull out some yeast. And then weigh out my yeast. As I get closer, there we go. Okay. The same thing, I'm going to fold over that way I can reuse that without it spilling out. Okay, and then I'm going to add this yeast to my hot water. Okay, and put this whey boat aside because it is now dirty and I will need to clean it before I can use it again. All right, now we want to stir our yeast in our hot water. All right, so there's my yeast solution. Okay, and now I need six mils for each small bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my six mils for the bottle I'm working on. Okay. Put my balance aside. Okay, I'm going to put my yeast into my bottle. It's going to start using the sugar as an energy source and consuming it. Okay, and then it wants me to layer some baby oil. 
Okay, we don't want to mix the solution. So when you do the baby oil, you're going to take your dropper, you're going to pull up your oil, and that's the mineral oil here. And then the best way to do this is to touch the side of your dropper against the side of your bottle and very, very carefully put it in there. Okay. Very carefully put your mineral oil on top. Okay, you can try, you know, a technique that works for you, but you do want to have two layers in there. All right. And then you're going to use this for each of your other bottles. Since I'm just using it right now, I'm going to go ahead and lay it on that towel and cap this and put this aside for later. All right, so now we want to insert the bottle dropper tops on the bottles. Okay, so what's easiest to do is to go ahead and take the little tip. Okay, and put it on the tubing before you snap it onto the bottle. Okay. But even before we do that, we wanna go ahead and make sure we're ready to go because if you snap this onto the bottle, it can be a little bit difficult um, to get the rest of it done. So I'm going to go ahead and get my styrofoam cup with the hot water. Okay. Fill that up with my hot water. Okay. And then we need to fill a centrifuge tube. Okay. Got too much water, there we go. All right, so we're gonna insert a piece of tubing. So I've connected the, the, the bottle dropper top to this. I'm gonna put the tubing into my centrifuge tube. I'm gonna bend it, okay? And then I'm going to turn this over and put it into my hot water and make sure that my tubing is still inside my centrifuge tube, which it is, okay? And I have indeed kept the hot water inside my tube. Okay, and now we're gonna fill some more I'm just about out of water. So this is why I'm just setting up one. Because we want to keep this warm, all right? So what we're going to do is we're basically we're creating a water bath. So for this one, I don't need to fill it all the way. I'm just filling it part way because I'm putting my sugar and yeast bottle into there. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect this. Snap that on. I'm going to put this in here. Okay. And then I can go ahead and monitor my reaction. And so throughout your reaction, you should be forming gas because okay, the yeast will bubble up. And again, if you've ever used yeast um, for cooking before, you'll notice that little bubbles form. So that's what should be occurring with your experiment here is eventually some bubbles will start to form and you should be getting some gas into your um, two. So I would record my initial volume of gas based on what's going on in my tube here. And then over time, what'll happen is the bubbles will go in and a displacement reaction, well, not a reaction, but a water displacement will happen. So as the gas goes into the tube, it'll push the water out and fill with gas. So, but you want to make sure you get your initial volume of gas in there. And then you will monitor this every 15 minutes. Okay, make sure that my yeast and my sugar are talking to each other. Okay. And it can take a few minutes for yeast and sugar to start doing their thing. So um, you wanna make sure that when you put the yeast in there with the sugar, that they actually in, you know, interact and it's not just the yeast on top of the sugar and everything gets all together. Because I think when I cook with yeast um, and I put it all together, I have to stir it a little bit to make sure that the yeast solution and the sugar all start doing their thing. 
And then you will measure that again every 15 minutes. And then you'll calculate um, how much carbon dioxide per gram of your sugar form or was formed there. And then you'll do another calculation to give you how much ATP because the balanced equation, we have an equal um, inequality there between our carbon dioxide and our ATP. So if you know how much carbon dioxide is formed, you can figure out how much ATP is formed based on that balanced equation. Okay, and so you'll do this with your monosaccharides. So you'll do three monosaccharides and then you will clean everything up, get it all reset, and then you will do this again for your polysaccharides. Okay, and so then you'll get some data on how much ATP um, that you form from glucose, sucrose, lactose, starch and cellulose, okay? On your data table, there's space to write all of your data and then all of your observations, make sure you're writing observations. And then on the other data table down here, space for your calculations. Make sure you show me your calculations. Same thing on the other side for our polysaccharides, observations, so write down what you see and then do your calculations, all right? So that is your fermentation experiment where you're going to be forming some ATP um, by letting yeast and different sugars interact with each other. Um, one potential problem that can happen with an experiment like this is if the yeast has gone bad. So I've, I've encountered that in cooking before where I've used a packet of yeast and it just doesn't really do anything um, with the mixture that I put it in. If that's the case, um, you might need to um, like go to the grocery store and get a fresh packet of yeast. It, that shouldn't be a huge problem, but I have seen that happen um, in cooking before where the yeast just no longer is any good and it just doesn't do anything. And so um, I end up having to go get fresh yeast. The other problem is if you do end up mixing too much of that mineral oil with your um, yeast and sugar mixtures, that mineral oil can get in the way of the reaction happening. Okay. All right. So that is your experiment. Hopefully it will be cool and um, you'll get to see yeast do its thing and figure out how much energy you get from these various different sugars.